Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. Um, I decided that I may as well um, complete, uh, go through the rest of the slides from uh, Peter Carter's uh, great um, presentation on the state, sort of the state of the planet 2021, um, especially since uh, I got to the uh, oceans uh, section. So, so let's have a look at the oceans because I, I finished uh, off the last session a bit uh, too quickly. So. Um, there's actually more I wanted to say on this. So we're seeing multiple rapidly increasing damaging effects on the ocean. So this is the surface temperature um, plotted. Um, and we're seeing a temperature rise here across the oceans. Because of the increase of temperature, the seawater cannot hold as much dissolved gas. So that includes CO2. So the sink is decreasing in the oceans, the CO2 carbon sink. And also the dissolved oxygen is increasing, which is harmful to marine life. The ocean is becoming more and more acidic because of the CO2 being absorbed in the water, carbonic acid, so the pH is dropping. This is a, when the pH goes down, that means the acidification is increasing. Ocean heat, We've 93% of the added atmospheric greenhouse gas heat has gone to heating the oceans. That makes the ocean heat a far better climate change indicator than global average surface warming. Ocean heat is definitely accelerating from multiple sources and accelerating fast. So here's the ocean heat acceleration. This is the ocean heat anomaly in zeta joules. The zeta is 10 to the 21. So this is the energy going into the ocean. And you can see how around 19 the mid 80s, it really stepped up. I mean, it's like, it's like a step change in the slope and we're, st we're setting record levels of ocean heat. And this is in a paper that was published in January, 2020. Okay, so here, this is from the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, different source, okay, from these guys. And they're look, the ocean heat is still, you know, it's on a tear, it's increasing. The last few years have been horrible for rapid rises in ocean heat. This is from the global climate in 2015 to 2019, a summary by the WMO on 2020. This is the accelerating ocean heat content to 2019 from NOAA. And this is the surface to 2,300 feet down, very, very rapid rise. This is the, the below 2,300 feet down to 65, 60 feet. So, uh, you know, this is clustered here and then below 65, 60 feet, we're still seeing a rise on in, at the deep levels of the ocean. So the ocean is warming throughout the entire water column. This is another image um, from a different paper. Ocean temperatures hit record high in 2020. This paper was published in January 2021. And you can see what this should be 2019 here. You can see the, the slope of this is higher than even here. So the curve is starting to go up even faster. And this is 0 to 300 meters, 300 to 700, 700 to 2,000 meters, and 2,000 meters to the bottom. So there's not much heating at the bottom, but there's still heating even that far down. Um, okay, so, so this is uh, an image here. Another image of this is zeta joules, 10 to the 21 joules. And it's showing the, uh, some of the, the, the data that is occurring. This is, uh, um, this is ocean heat here, and this is deeper down. Okay, so since 1993, the rate of ocean warming has more than doubled. Okay, uh, 19, 1993. From about here to present day, the, ocean, the rate of ocean warming has more than doubled. So you can look at it here. 69 to 93, this is the, um, the heat in zeta joules per year going into the oceans. And 1993 to 2017, it's, it's doubled, more than, more than doubled. And of course, because of all the ocean heating, the ocean is expanding significantly. And that's up to now caused most of the sea level rise. But the globe, the, we're getting more and more glacier melt from Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. From, we're getting continued glacier mass loss from alpine glaciers and the ocean thermal expansion from all that heat going into the ocean. 
So the sea level rise uh, going up about 3.3, 3.4 millimeters per year. And uh, the models of the IPCC are very conservative on sea level rise by say 2080, by 2100. Uh, the levels are exceeding that. And, and uh, here's the worst case, um, but we're, we're far exceeding that. I'm, I'm gonna go quickly past that because I just don't trust those numbers at all. What is interesting is that the, the mass loss from the Antarctic ice sheet over the period 2007 to 2016 tripled relative to the previous period, 1997 to 2006. So if you take a 10 year period more recently and compare it to one, a 10 year period earlier, Antarctic tripled, Greenland mass loss doubled over the same period. Okay, the acceleration of ice flow and retreat in Antarctica has the potential to lead to sea level rise of many meters within a few centuries. And, uh, you know, we're seeing instability even on the Eastern Antarctic, okay? Ocean acidification, we're, it's rapidly accelerating and it's unprecedented in 300 million years. So here's the pH of surface waters around Australia. Okay, dropping from uh, 8.18 pH down to under 8.06, okay? And if you invert this curve, this is the ocean acidif acidification. Okay, when pH drops, it means it's getting more acidic. The current rate of acidification is 10 times faster than at any time in the past 300 million years. The rate of decrease in pH has accelerated to over 0.02 per decade, which is more than five times faster than from 1900 to 1960. Okay, so it's definitely tracking uh, the worst case scenarios, the, the pH. Okay, this is, um, there's more curves here. So you can see this is the measured, the observed, and then some models. This is projected by RCP 8.5. Get down to here and it's very difficult for uh, shellfish to form their shells, for the phytoplankton to, to form their, their calcium shells. Ocean deoxygenation is another huge problem. Um, it's also happening deeper and deeper into the oceans. Okay, so it's tracking above the worst case scenario here. This is a historical, and these are the models. This is the RCP 8.5, the worst case model, the RCP 2.6 model. This is oxygen, ocean oxygen, 100 to 600 meter depth, changing relative to uh, 1986 to 2005. Okay, so there's a special report on the ocean and cryosphere and a changing climate. That's where this data is from. Sea surface temperature is rising. Okay, accelerating sea surface temperature rise, again, from the model, the two different models, and the historical, the actual. Okay, and of course, the warming ocean, um, it's causing bleaching on the coral reefs. There was extensive bleaching in 2020 on the coral reefs around Australia. And in 2016, there was also a mass bleaching when the previous world record global temperature was reached. So it's getting worse and worse. Now, the last section, of course, is the Arctic. And I'm going to go over this very, very quickly because I've talked about the Arctic quite a bit. But, you know, the Arctic's the air conditioner of the entire northern hemisphere. Frozen Arctic is vital to life on Earth. Loss of the summer Arctic sea ice and snow will change the temperate climate of the northern hemisphere, actually the climate of the rest of the planet. And there's the albedo effect, the Arctic's getting much darker. So this is the Arctic amplification. This is the um, surface, uh, uh, this is the surface temperature, surface air temperature anomaly. And you can see the Arctic is uh, red. So the Arctic warming has taken off since, uh, you know, since 2000 anyway, compared to the global average. Okay, it's accelerating on a worst case scenario. Okay, um, you know, abrupt rises in temperature now being experienced in the Arctic have only been observed during the last ice age. Okay, and that was if you compare it to the DO oscillations, 10 to 12 degree rise over a 40 to 100 year period. You know, um, the Arctic has switched from carbon sink to carbon source. Okay, so in the summer, you've got CO2 released, microbes are breaking down plant matter in the, in the thawing permafrost. 
and then but plants are growing on the surface capturing CO2. In the winter, the microbes are still working uh, at deeper layers. The upper layers are refreezing and methane is percolating through. So we're still getting releases of CO2 and methane throughout the winter. Of course, I mentioned the ice loss from Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets is accelerating. Okay, so you can see this is the, uh, some of the, this is in the report I just mentioned, the special report on the ocean and cryosphere and a change in climate from the IPCC 2019. And you can see Arctic sea ice extent decreasing, Arctic snow cover extent in the spring, in June in this case, decreasing, the near surface permafrost area actually decreasing. So the permafrost is thawing. These are all amplifying feedbacks for warming in the Arctic. This is the Arctic summer sea ice extent. The loss is accelerating and it's tracking also a worst case scenario here, the, the, the red curve compared to the models. Okay, we're seeing a dramatic decline in Arctic sea ice. This is the uh, sea ice volume. So taking the, the area times the thickness and this is in April, the month of April, the decline, and this is the decline in September. Okay, so the decline in September is the largest, minus 3.2. That's a uh, thousand cubic kilometers per decade decline, and it's declining in all of the different basins here, as you can see. So it's abrupt. Arctic, we're getting Arctic sea ice loss being abrupt and accelerating. And there was, a, there was a paper here, July 20, 29, 2020, past perspectives on the present era of abrupt Arctic climate change. Of course, the Greenland ice sheet mass loss is accelerating. It's tracking the worst case scenario. Uh, also, the, um, the Greenland surface temperature increase. Okay, these are these Dansgaard Osher oscillations where there's a jump in temperature and we're seeing that sort of thing also going on today. The Antarctic ice sheet is also accelerating, tracking the worst case scenario, okay? And, um, you know, it's, it will rapidly cause a uh, rise in sea level. So basically, um, I want to spend a bit of time on this chart. So there is enormous sources of global surface heating that is amplifying feedbacks that you know are tipping points. So these are some possible tipping points. So already tipped or close to tipping is the Arctic summer sea ice, Greenland ice sheet, question mark. The Amazon is in trouble. I'll talk about that in a paper in a few videos. The Antarctic ice sheets are getting a lot more melt. Permafrost has an internal heat generation tipping point. The model projections of the individual Arctic tipping points does not account for the um, th this, all this reinforcing. So there, there's, um, you know, it's possible that, that, you know, things are tipping already and that uh, a little bit higher temperature and it's going to trigger all of these tipping points. And then if we go back here, uh, these are other things, uh, the Arctic summer sea ice loss, loss of albedo, uh, snow cover over land, loss of cooling, loss of reflection. Greenland ice sheet, loss of cooling, subarctic wetlands, methane being released, the boreal forests are stressed, um, permafrost methane, CO2 nitrous oxide, the cloth rates under the seafloor for methane, tropical wetlands for methane, Antarctic ice sheet, loss of cooling. Okay, so there's all of these different tipping points. So I'll talk about them. So just to give you sort of an overview of some of the things that I'm going to be talking about soon here are, uh, this is climate change needs an operation warp speed, like the COVID vaccine. Um, I'm going to talk about C3 and C4 plants a bit and the difference. Okay, compare the C3, C4 and so-called CAM plants. The reason is that, uh, you know, they're, they're all, they all come up in this paper. How close are we to the temperature tipping point of the terrestrial biosphere, mostly of the plants on land? And the answer is very, very close. Um, then um, the Amazon, um, has, uh, a paper came out just recently on how the Amazon is becoming, may already be a greenhouse gas emitter, and this is a paper here, Carbon and Beyond, the Biochemistry of the Amazon. I'll talk about that, and I'll also talk about the greater committed warning, warming from a 
pattern effect, and then this paper, the quiet crossing of ocean tipping point. So those are things I'm planning on doing videos of in, in the next few days. Thank you for listening.